If you want to run faster or further and make it feel easier than it normally does, then one way to achieve this is to increase your VO2 max. I'm Anna and today on The Running Channel, I'm gonna be going through some tweaks in your training to help you improve your VO2 max and also explain what that is if you're not quite too sure. If you're new around here, we upload new videos every week all about running, so make sure you subscribe to The Running Channel and tap the bell icon so you get notified when we do. So first up, a little bit of science about what VO2 max is and why it's important to know about it and improve it if you want your running to get better. So when you run, your body can improve several functions, with the most obvious being your muscle strength, your heart rate, and your body weight and composition. There is another function that improves with aerobic exercise, and that is maximal oxygen consumption or VO2 max for short. And what that is, is the amount of oxygen your body can utilize per kilogram of body weight per minute. Still with me? So when we exercise hard, the more oxygen is being delivered to our muscles via red blood cells. So the more oxygen we can consume, then the easier exercise feels to our body, which is the key benefit of training to improve your VO2 max. Your VO2 max score can vary on a number of different things. So, for example, men typically have higher VO2 max scores than women. There's a strong genetic link as well. So, for inactive women, the average VO2 max score is around 33 millilitres of oxygen consumed per kilogram of body weight per minute, while for men it's 42. But elite women can have a VO2 max score in the 80s and elite men can get as high as 90 or more. Whilst VO2 max is a great measure of someone's distance running ability, it's important to note that it's just one of several factors at play. Another is a runner's running efficiency. So if you have two runners with identical VO2 max scores, the one with the better running efficiency will be able to run faster. And that's because they're able to utilize their body's ability to carry oxygen better. There are a number of ways to measure your VO2 max and the most common and probably accurate way is in a lab where the runner is hooked up to a breathing mask and put on a treadmill. The treadmill then has the increments of speed increased and the incline as well until they get to the point of exhaustion. And we're talking about legs buckling, probably gonna fall off the back if they didn't let you stop exhaustion. So the idea here is to really get the heart rate up and measure how much oxygen your body is using when you're pushing yourself to your limits. These tests are usually started on the treadmill at your lactate threshold pace. So we're talking about the top end of the pace that you would run your tempo runs at. Then the gradient of the treadmill is increased every minute by 0.5% or 1% until you can't go anymore. And there are academic labs all over the place that are willing to test runners of any ability for their VO2 max score. Many GPS watches will also give you a rough idea of your VO2 max score too. It's important to note that these aren't always accurate, but it's great to know roughly where you sit on the scale. So what these will do will take into account your heart rate data, so either from a chest strap or from a wrist sensor if that's what your watch has, and also your age and most importantly your gender as well. Being consistent with your running will improve your VO2 max score because it's an indication of your cardiovascular fitness. As your fitness improves, so should your VO2 max score. But there are certain sessions that you can do to help improve your VO2 max score, and we're gonna run you through them now. Longer hill reps of around two to three minutes are great for improving your VO2 max. So as with any hill session, start off with a nice easy jog of around 10 minutes to warm up. Then find a hill and run up it for two to three minutes, jog back down and repeat. And don't forget to finish the session with a cool down of around 10 minutes as well. So with this, start off with around four times two minute intervals or three times three minute intervals, and then build your way up as this session feels easier, not easy, but easier, and build up to 10 times two minutes or seven times three minutes. To work out what pace you should be running intervals at to improve your VO2 max score, then aim for somewhere around your one mile race pace. For more experienced runners, it would be closer to your two mile race pace. 
Aim to be within a couple of beats per minute of your max heart rate by the end of each of these intervals. And here are some ideas of interval workouts you can do on the track to improve your VO2 max score. Eight 600 meter efforts, six 800 meter efforts, five one kilometer efforts, or four 1200 meter efforts with the idea that the total volume equals around five kilometers. The ideal length of a rep in a VO2 max session is around two to three minutes. This is because it takes one or two minutes to get up to your VO2 max rate and then you only really need to stress it for about a minute. Your recovery times should be about the same length as the length of the rep. Just like training with weight improves your strength, aerobic training can help improve your fitness. And there are loads of different ways to improve your VO2 max score that aren't running. One of the best ways is high intensity interval training. And this is because it really gets your heart and lungs pumping hard. So to improve your VO2 max score, you should aim for reps of around two minutes in length over a session that's 15 minutes or more in duration. Keep at it for a period of four to 12 weeks and you should notice some improvement to your VO2 max score. Similarly, things like cycling and rowing can also help improve your fitness and therefore your VO2 max score. The key here is to really push it hard during those periods of effort. A lot of athletes will train at altitude in places like South Africa, Kenya or the Pyrenees. Now we mentioned earlier that your VO2 max score is based on your body's ability to carry oxygen via red blood cells. So training at altitude in places like this encourages your body to create more red blood cells to compensate for the lack of oxygen in the thinner air at altitude. And this can give you a boost in your training when you then return to sea level for around one to three months. It's worth mentioning that this pursuit of red blood cells and improved performance is what's led countless athletes to take performance enhancing drugs like EPO. Think of the cyclist Lance Armstrong. So what they're doing here is making the body artificially create more red blood cells or even re-infusing their own blood to try and encourage that higher level of red blood cells in their body. Now, of course, this practice is completely illegal and dangerous, uh, but we thought that you might like to know how it fits in in a conversation surrounding VO2 max. Even if you don't have any major performance improvement goals in mind, being able to increase your VO2 max score is great for your overall health in general because it reduces the daily workload on your heart. Just remember though that it has got a lot to do with genetics. So even if you get to the point where you've increased your VO2 max score, you might not be able to go any further than that, not because you're not training properly, just because you've got to the point that that's all your body can handle. Hopefully this has gone some way to explain the scientific nature of VO2 max, what it is and how you can improve yours. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave us any questions below as well, and we will see you next time on The Running Channel.